Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 100th edition of the Awesome Cast. Triple digits, we've made it this far. Yet we've awesome all- Cast, assemble! Yeah, we've only just <laughs> begun. We've assembled a, a great crew for uh, episode 100. We got some people dropping into the hangout. Uh, with me on the couch, as usual, is Chachi of I'm on the, couch. the Today Smash Hit Insert Coin to Begin.com. For today. For today. Uh, yeah, we posted an exclusive interview with Mark Mears, who is the uh, voice actor behind Commander Shepard of the Mass Effect series. And it's extremely popular. <laughs> it's doing fairly well, yes. you could say. Yes. You could so, say. Uh, yeah, you can go over to uh, insertcointobegin.com and read part one of the three-part interview. I love Because it. the guy likes to talk. I love the new logo, by the way. Yeah, me too. I'm a big fan yeah. of that. So, I wasn't uh, expecting that. Bobby just sent that over. He was like, hey, I got an idea for a logo. I will send it to you later. And like an hour later, he, he, said he it. worked on it in, during the hangout last night or during Raw. Yeah. And it was like, hey, check this out. So there you yeah. go. Also uh, with us is Rob De La Creta. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I uh, I actually, I seem to have come down with something awful. Oh, no. <laughs> like I woke He's up this too. morning <clears throat> with a little something in my throat. And throughout the day, I could feel like the blood running from my face and my throat getting worse. So was, I've got that going for me. I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, what is this? This is licorice, lemongrass, mint tea. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this out there. What do you got? That does not sound delicious at all. It's magical and it makes your throat feel like fairies. Oh, I'm sure, but it doesn't sound good at all. It sounds the opposite of good. Bad. No, it, it, it tastes the opposite of bad, which is, <laughs> I doubt. Well, it. not not inherently good. <laughs> anyway excellent also with us is mike pound of uncle crappy.com he's the real life journalist that we have on from time to time <laughs> first i think we had you on the 50th show and i think so now the hundredth yeah wasn't he in one of the first 10 he's also? been he's been a few other ones yeah. too yeah 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 once in a while so how you doing i'm doing well i'm i am not drinking uh licorice lemongrass tea Good and I'm, I, and I'm feeling pretty good. So I am it's, glad it's you do not have a big glass of disgusting in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And also with us is Cynthia Kolaski of Big Big Design, my brilliance mistakes dot com. How you doing? From her new place down in the Strip District. Yes. Hello. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm feeling very urban. Yes. <laughs> I've been loving the pictures of your apartment that have been uh, showing up on your blog lately. Thanks. I'll have to get you over here to see it in that, person. That's the kind of like city apartment I've always wanted. Well, that's a hangout. Hi, Frank. Um, but there you go. Um, so, so how's how's city life treating you? It's fantastic. It it uh, like the strip district. Here's a here's a fun fact about me. I'm afraid of crowds. So uh, <laughs> oh, I don't perfect place. I don't come down to the strip. I never came down to the strip district because the only day I could really come down would be like on a Saturday. And of course, it's a madhouse here on a Saturday. It turns out. But the time to be down here is like eight o'clock on a Tuesday. Sorry. It's like, like there's no there's no line at the Pen Mac cheese counter, uh, and you can go midday to the Claylands ice cream place, and they'll they'll serve up whatever you want. And it's just this is midweek is is what it's all about. Awesome, awesome. And of course, this is your awesome cast. That's Chachi still. This hey. is your awesome cast where we uh, 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 talk about the tech for the week, yeah, the stuff yeah, that we yeah. think are awesome. You're, the camera's not on you, sir. I know. <laughs> right Bring up the energy. What? Okay, okay. Making the show exciting. There you go. Um, and you can catch us as always here. We're live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sogertronmedia.com. We're doing the hangout thing. So make sure you circle us. We'll circle you back and you'll be invited in and have a chance to join us. Make funny faces like Frank is behind me and uh and we uh <laughs> bring in towards the end of the, <laughs> towards the, end of the show it's just it's kind of creeping me out there i kind of want him to bring i don't know if he's frozen because he's on his phone so it's <laughs> <laughs> just there i kind of want him to slowly like pull up a drink with the straw <laughs> and take a drink while making that face still <laughs> and then slowly lower the drink 
without changing his face. You don't see what I do to the guys during the Monday Night Hangouts when I'm having <laughs> audio problems. <laughs> um, but yeah, hey, we're at AwesomeCast.com. If you want to check out all our episodes, contact at AwesomeCast.com to communicate with us. We're on Twitter. Uh, tag the show AC100. We can say that now. Uh, if you want to uh, you know, keep in the conversation for this show on Google+, Plus, of course, on Facebook. And just continue conversation. Let us know what you think about the stuff, how we're right, wrong. Because we do get a lot of stuff, especially from AJ, about how wrong we are. So uh, so there's that. I am never wrong, sir. <laughs> He's the, and he is going to disagree with that, sir. I know. So, um, so let's get right into it. Uh, we I know we were off for the week. Sorry, guys. I think I, is that the only week we've taken do off? Do not apologize. I, I do apologize. No, Except for holidays, I think it's the only one we take. Yeah, we, take, we took some weeks off for the holidays. For the holidays is one thing, but you know it would you know came up and I had to go to New York uh, out of nowhere. Uh, so let's let's start with something I think is really cool here. Um, I'm always a fan of the, people doing interesting things with the Connect. Um, and, of course, we talked about the uh, holograms, the tupac of gram a few weeks ago that uh, Rob filled us in on, on how that actually works. tupac gram Is that what we're calling it? I, That's what it's called. tupac gram Hollow? Yeah, I, I don't know. Tupagram. 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 All right. Yeah. That's the technical term. Patent pending. Patent pending. Exactly. <laughs> well, here we have, uh, they're using Connects for holographic 3D video conferencing, according to this. Worthless. Worthless. Why do you think this is worthless? Did you look at this, Rob? Yes, I looked at this. Okay, now, now, th- 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 why is this worthless? Um, do you really need a hologram to talk to somebody? <laughs> Who needs any of this stuff? But, <laughs> but, but, but the technology in general, it's taken, I think, like seven or eight um, connects along the top of the cylinder. If you're on video, you can see. And as you, and he's going around now, as you see, it's taken the image from that side of the body you would be on. So I guess. So remember, uh, <clears throat> remember last week when I mentioned that I think it's Phillips that has like a legitimate hologram thing. Mm-hmm. That's that thing, but with Connect cameras. So it's probably a cheaper version. Yeah, yeah. It basically, the Phillips thing is they take whatever object they need to develop a model of, and they either render it or they put it in a lab and surround it with cameras. In this instance, they're doing the exact same thing, but with the Connect. Mm-hmm. Funny story, you don't need to connect to do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I write this down because this mm-hmm. doesn't happen often. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and agree with Rob here. <laughs> this is completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> because in, if you're having a video conference, you don't need to see the person's butt. Yeah, I mean, the, the so there are like I can think of a handful of ways this is useful, but n- not entirely in real time. So the idea of instead of needing to see a person, but you need to see a three D object, like say I am hypothetically an industrial designer and I need to show you this thing that I made, and you need to be able to see every side of it. There is this really awkward hypothetical situation in which you could make use of being able to video chat to a hologram, or I could send you pictures from all of the sides. <laughs> I mean, like, the old argument is, like, you watch... Uh, uh, I know they did it in Stargate. They've done it in Star Wars and Star Trek plenty of times, where they have, like, this holographic map thing where you can see all the sides of a thing, and it's not actually useful. Like, it's a cool gimmick, but it's not useful. So what you need more of is like the the Tony Stark thing where he pulls the object and can take it and look at it. Yes, I mean, like that. that's that's like a crazy cool thing. Mm-hmm. But so I mean, like taking like the hologram into the tangible, to tangible space. Is the cool. Tony Stark. Thing. Sorry, was that Cindy? Maybe this is like a step on the way to to the Tony Stark thing. And the other thing is, I I don't, if I may, if I may pose the other point of view. You know, we don't see a use for it because. We never had it, and so, but maybe we will see a use for it in the future. Yeah, I mean, certainly. Really I mean, it has as far as like video point? conferencing. I say that it's worthless, but this is also like it's never a bad thing for people to be thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's probably like a a like we think we can do this kind of project too. So, yeah, sure. I mean, like I can't some... tell you how many things I've done where I'm like, eh, this is a, this isn't really worth anything, but it's fun. And those are the little steps that lead to big inventions. Exactly, exactly. Because I mean, I mean, especially as open as the as uh, Connect has been for hacking for the SDK and everything. So it's a nice tool, easily accessible tool that has a lot of the stuff 
people would want, you know, the, the infrared sensors, the, you know, all that other kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And, it, and it's, I'm always interested to see, you know, what kind of stuff happens with this. So It puts us uh, one step closer to the live streaming holodeck. Exactly. Was that Sydney? I said my little peeve about it is that from the little demo they've got there, it's like one way. So like only one person can see the other person's button. The other person can't, you know, <laughs> you have to have these two like video phone booths. So uh, I don't know, but I don't know how you would do it. Otherwise, like a, a hat with a ring around that would, I don't know. <laughs> a connect hat would be pretty heavy. I have yeah, to say. Especially that many connects. Yeah. So, and, and it, I, I, I posted this on the blog, but, and I also said it on Twitter, but, but the connect is a freaky device. Mm-hmm. Like I, I recently went out and bought one and it's scary. <laughs> no, I no. I'll, let me let me explain. Uh, because what it does is it automatically scans the room for people when it when you turn on the Xbox. Once it scans the room, it'll go back through, and it'll focus on the person that they can get the best shot of. And that person is the focus of the entire Xbox uh, session. Now. When you're playing Portal 2, uh, for those unfamiliar, Portal 2 is the, the sequel in which uh, the main uh, robot is back from the dead and extremely vengeful and upset and kind of wants to kill you the entire game. So you're going through this game, listening to this robot make sarcastic death threats to you, while your Xbox is staring at you. That is creepy. I, I was a little disturbed. Hmm. So so while you have your... So I turn it the other way. <laughs> 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 what if, you know, why doesn't someone make a game then where that person just says, you are fabulous. You know, <laughs> wow, what a great, what, what outfit you're wearing today. You know what I mean? You can have a very mm-hmm. positive experience. Well, she does that in the first one. Okay. But it, it's all sarcasm. Mm-hmm. Like she'll she'll compliment you, but in the same breath, it'll be like, uh, "You must be the the pride of," and it'll say, "Subjects hometown here." <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, but you know, it's kind of the. Uh, I bet there are games like that, Cindy, like the, uh, the you know the EA Actives and all all those other fitness apps that come out or games that come out for the Connect. You know, much like they did for the Wii. But that was one of, the, one of the first things that that kind of impressed me because they showed an outline of somebody uh, doing one of these fitness games when they first unveiled the Connect at E3, and you can actually see the clothing outlines. Hmm. So, like, like I think she like she took her sweater off or something, and and you saw it in the outline that it was interpreted. So, I could see some of those games kind of kind of doing that. Like, I, I'm really I'm really kind of interested to see how this thing does like the yoga programs with it. Um, I've been talking with the yoga instructor at, at one of my one of my gigs, and and you know the validity of using like a connect yoga game or or a Wii Fit yoga game or something like that. The Wii's the Wii's interesting because it actually have like the EA Active. I played with it, and you know certain positions don't work if you haven't positioned it right, like because you stick part of one of the Wii motes into your into a strap you put along your leg, and that's how it's testing it. But it'll be always be wrong. Versus mm-hmm. Connect actually sees how you're moving your body. Well, right, it's I, the same I, way with the with the Zumba one, with the mm-hmm. Zumba game. That if you put it in wrong, it, it doesn't it can't tell you're shaking your hips or whatever it is that you're exactly. You know, exactly. You're doing. It just it just knows you're kind of moving. So unfortunately, I will not be the one to uh, tell you anything. I about. was really hoping Chachi would play test the Zumba and yoga for me, no. but uh, apparently, I'm going to have to get my own. So <laughs> yeah, that's let me say this say. though about the the yoga instructor, and you know, one of the things that yoga good yoga instructor does is tell you if you're positioned wrong. Exactly, and that actually is an instance where you would want a real time 3D hologram, because how can you really tell if someone's hip is up or down or whatever? <laughs> They're calling for the Mayans in the chat room because uh, you and Rob are agreeing earlier. Oh, so. yeah. Well, enjoy, Lo John. <clears throat> um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's actually the advice she gives is, uh, is when you're doing like the DVDs or something to check in with an instructor every once a, an instructor every once in a while, so you kind of know you're doing it right. So, but I might be, you know, you know the, 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 I think this might be closing that gap a little bit, you know, as it gets a little more precise. So, 
Um, so another story I came up, I, I came up with, uh, found during my off time here. Um, interesting uses for Foursquare. And Pittsburgh is one of the first cities that they launched with here. Um, this is on the verge. Four, Foursquare check-ins used to map neighborhood trends. This is a live hoods project. Um, and I, I got to play with it a little bit to see. Like, I guess they're, they're, they're dividing up. Here, we'll click on Pittsburgh here so we're familiar with it. Oh, great, it's gang wars. It kind of looks like it, right? You get all these little colored pins uh, all over the city, and I guess they're grouped to uh, demographics. Um, like, I want to be on the gray team. Let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? So, so Chachi, you live up here around the Belts Hoover, Mount Oliver, this gray, yes. the gray stuff here. So so your your trends, and it shows you like oh. popular places and unique things to do here and stuff like that. But I think it, the color relates you to. So your neighborhood is a lot like this neighborhood over here on the north side, uh, this neighborhood over here around Oakland, around yeah. the University of Pittsburgh. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of demographic stuff. And it, it was just kind of a, you know, cool Hold on, thing zoom in on my, can you zoom in more? On my neighborhood. On your neighborhood? Can, yeah. I'm trying to find the ghetto bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it right here. That might be it. Wait, I think I can't see. Where are we at? I can't see the streets. It's all Get there. It stop. is. There it is. That that's mine. That's yours. I put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started. I started find uh, found out about this last week when um a, a Twitter friend of mine uh, pointed out that in my neighborhood, which is Pittsburgh's live hood number two, you know, uh, uh, Bellevue Brighton Heights, um. My house is the fourth busiest <laughs> spot in the neighborhood, which probably says more about me than it does about the neighborhood. But um, but it's it's a, it's a cool look at, at uh, what the folks in my neighborhood do. We like the Rusty Dory Pub a lot, apparently, which is mm -hmm. eh, it's okay. <laughs> and, all, and apparently, third, the McKee's Rocks Bridge. Yes, yes, I am just behind the McKee's Rocks Bridge. <laughs> oh, it is there. It is right there. Actually, number four <laughs> is Crappy House. <laughs> Uh, number one unique thing to do there is strip club. At the crappy house? At the crappy house? <laughs> oh, no, okay. That's not okay. Although I, love, uh, I love it. If you want. Club erotica and douchebag spot. <laughs> Whatever that means. So I, honestly, I think you know what that means. I, you know, you know. So. Uh, so I was looking at my neighborhood in that too, the, the, my new neighborhood, the strip district. And it's sort of interesting, particularly if you look at the stats. And like the times of day, um, because Saturday and Sunday are yes. the busiest days. And the evening, you know, you'd, you'd expect that, you know, it gets busier in the evening time. A lot. The main thing, I think, is eating dinner. Is food is the biggest thing in the Strip District. But what I think is not being reflected is the fact that um, I'm, I'm just going to guess that all the wholesale produce guys that come in, guys and girls probably, but mostly guys that come in and buy and sell produce probably don't check in on Foursquare. So it doesn't Thanks. actually actively reflect that, you know, that 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. burst of activity that happens, you know, right down there around the bridge. Mm -hmm. Rob, are you saying something? Nope. Okay. That, that burst it's... of activity is huge, though. Yeah. By the way. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's the thing. You, it, it is a little bit of a, uh, you know, at least people that have phones, right? So, but it's a well, and who want to check in on? Force yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's true too. Because not everybody like like. I'm gets... not gonna do that. That sounds dumb. Yeah. Well, say if the same people want to know where I am, they can call me <laughs> on my flip phone. On your flip phone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, I don't know. It was just a fun thing. Um, actually, I have another one. Did I put the uh, GL thing in here? It's at the bottom, sir. Is it at the bottom? I, that kind of goes a, a, right along with this. I think. Um, oh, no, I lost it. And this oh, there is, it is. The cube. The cube? Yeah, it's uh, one, two, three, four from the bottom. It's row 38. <laughs> Thank you. It is. In, spread yes. in spreadsheet terms. There it is. Um, so this, I forgot there was numbers. We'll see if it loads on this computer uh, down here. But actually, here's a picture of it. So, it so you remember the old Labyrinth games with the marble? And you, like, you know, tilt it, and the marble goes. You try not to get in the hole. You're really excited about this. It, it's fun. So they did it with Google Maps. Oh, that's cool. In a giant cube. Oh, wow. And uh, here, we'll, it's WebGL and everything. Um, whoops. 
think I went to a different site. Yes, I did. Uh, we'll see. Wait, what, did that? I say tower defense? Mm-hmm. Maps TD adds tower defense to Google Maps. Oh man! <laughs> well, that was the uh, that was the Easter egg for some for uh, April Fools this year. Yeah, yeah, for April Fools they put the that that eight bit map thing on the. Yeah. I didn't realize it was Tower Defense, though. I'm going to be I, playing Google Maps. I don't Maps. think they had gamified it, but it was the same map. Nice. I'm going to be playing Google Maps later. Here, we got this one loading. Uh, I have to wait while it loads. Um, that that mar- marble thing, speaking of like the Kinect, on the on the Wii, that you, the, the, one of the fit things is you're supposed to balance on your... It's one of the ones I'm really, really terrible about. You're supposed to like balance and get the balls in the right places and things like that. Is on, like, um, so... Can you? I wonder if someone can do a mashup between the Wii and this Google Maps Cube thing. Because then it'd be like it would be active as well as interesting. Oh, I'll have to bring it up. It's not loading very well on this old iMac that I'm running on down here. So we'll skip that for now. But go check that out. It's at um, here. Bring up the site if it comes back and crashing. Uh, it's playmapscube.com if you want to check that out. And actually, it looks like it might be done. Done here. Maybe it says nope. check, check it in Tokyo. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't want to go to Japan. All right, right now. Well, anyways, but it'll give you stuff like uh, you know, go go to you know, hit all the train stops or something through the, through the whole thing. And mm-hmm. please wait a while with the game was. We'll move on. Uh, Chachi, what's the next story? Because apparently it's crashed my browser. I don't know. I think the Xbox is doing something. The Xbox is doing something. More specifically, Microsoft is doing something with the Xbox. Um, <coughs> if you take... if What? <laughs> I like how they turn it around. Well, Keep going. Because, I mean, the Xbox is going to do something on its own. Yeah. It keeps staring I, at you. Yeah. It's going to watch me, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it when my electronics watch me, okay? All right. I don't want it to watch back. Anyhow... I care uh, about you. With a, uh, with a coupon at Microsoft stores, of which we have zero in the state of Pennsylvania. How many are there? I don't know. Hey, we'll, I we'll get into that. never looked it up. Um, if you take a, a certain coupon into the Microsoft store, you will have the opportunity to buy a $99 uh, 4 gigabyte Xbox 360 with Kinect. Um, and it's, it sounds like a great deal. And ultimately, it is a great deal, but the hitch is you have to agree to a two-year agreement of Xbox Live at $15 a month. Um, just like cell phones, if you cancel the Xbox Live, then you have to pay an early termination fee. Um, if, you, if you break it down, it ends up being about $60 more than you would pay if you bought a brand new... Uh, but over two years... Yeah, it... it it's it's sixty dollars more it, than if you were to go out and buy a three hundred and sixty with Connect and a year of Xbox Live. Yeah, if you look at the time value of money, like the interest rate on that money that you're not having to put out up front, but then again, you could just finance it. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to do the math, figure out which which is the better deal. Hey, hey, really, is that any worse than like a Rent a Center deal? I mean, because no. you, you can Rent a Center a a Xbox if you really wanted to, or a PlayStation Three, and or you're going to pay more. It's going to play a load more than sixty dollars to right. do that. So um, I mean, it, ultimately, it, this is an excellent idea by Microsoft to mm-hmm. sell even more Xbox Three Sixties that they are selling anyhow. And the interesting thought of this, when the rumor came out last week, was that this is going to be to compete, help the Xbox compete with like Roku's and Apple TV's. Which... I don't see it. I, that, that was the word. I, I don't know if it really looks like that in their marketing or anything. I really, I haven't seen any marketing for this. Um, well, there is a coupon. <laughs> Where does this coupon show up? I have no because idea. Here, here's the coupon here. So, so, I mean, not only is this like, you know, something... First, you have to find a Microsoft store. Which, yes, that's step one. Uh, you know? Well, so here's the thing. Somebody who lives near a Microsoft store could like set themselves up in business. You mail your coupon to me. I will buy this and mail it back to you. Perfect. Apparently, the coupon's not required. Go. If you go and ask for it, they'll they'll put the code in for you. Oh, 
Like it's not even like the coupon is just out there for people to find it. Oh, um, it's like it's like it's like the golden ticket. So you was wrong yeah, again. Or something. Um, no, the golden ticket is finding a Microsoft. But then I wonder them doing that now, especially with there potentially being a new console next year. No. No? No. You, you think there's no console next year? There's not a console next year. Okay. It's going to be at least two years before there's a new Xbox. Okay. Um, they just now started working on the hardware for it. Mm-hmm. I heard there's a plan in Platron- Platronics? Plan- Plantronics? Yes. yes. Uh, that, have, that have been pushing out the new Xbox, uh, but it's supposedly just dev kits. Yes. So. Yeah, I mean... Because nobody no. would be doing that in America. Right. No, it's it's happening in America. Yeah, well, I would say that, that fabrication is happening in America, but... Yeah. They, if they were doing full on launch right. numbers, it would be over in China or something. Right. So, yeah, at this point, they're not even going to be showing. They're not showing a console at this year's E3, which means they wouldn't be showing it until E3 2013. Mm-hmm. Which means it's going to be another few months after that before it goes on sale because they'll wait for the holiday season. If they don't wait a year, right? To to launch it, right? Because I mean, uh, uh, we. We showed off their Project Revolution a year before, renaming it the Wii at the next E3 and then launching that right. holiday season. So, so um, it, if anything, this is just a, a a brilliant plan by Microsoft to sell uh, a metric crap ton of more Xboxes yeah, to hold they, them over. I, and this may be a pilot program, and maybe they'll extend it uh, later. Um, but for now, it just doesn't seem easy to give Microsoft your money in this situation. No, it seems extremely easy to give Microsoft your money in this situation. When I have to find a Microsoft store and have a coupon? Not really. If you All you have it, to do is drive to New Jersey. Yeah, if you yeah. want it, you'll find a Microsoft store. Yeah, if you want it that bad. I don't know how many people... I mean, they're going to pick up locals to the Microsoft store, I think is what Chachi's saying. Like, okay. nobody is going to actually drive out of their way to get this deal. So this is... They're, they're in a mall somewhere, and they see the little standee that says, uh, Xbox, uh, only $100, and that's what brings yeah. them in. And I mean, when you when you consider the actual customer outreach of Microsoft as a whole, comparatively to the number of Microsoft stores, of which there are 26, it means that anything that is launched out of a Microsoft store is a pilot program. Yeah. That's true. That's true. If, it, if this was coming out of Best Buy, it would be a huge deal. But it's a Microsoft store, so... Mm-hmm. From a, from an economic standpoint, the, the reason that you would use coupons for anything is like to appeal to a different market than you normally appeal to, people with a different price point. So they're figuring that people who are really passionate about it are buying them anyway. People who are passionate about it at a lower price maybe will drive a little ways, but probably the major target, like you're saying, is they're trying to they're trying to see if they can broaden the reach of it, maybe to maybe to start well basically i think they're like you said they they kind of it's the razors and razor blades thing they're going to make all their money on the razor blades which are the xbox live gold mm-hmm. contracts definitely and, and just putting that in more homes so they'll buy more you know zoom pass music or videos or or other subscriptions i don't know i wonder if they get a kickback from the netflix and hulu subscriptions they'd have to they, they do kind of have to don't they at a certain well then again how do they know they subscribe through that but I don't know. There's some deal that they're making out in the long run. So, um, but hey, you know, just like Kindle Fire, they 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 sold that at a loss so they could sell Amazon stuff. You know, makes sense. So, um, in other news, another uh, gaming one. Uh, this was one on slide to play dot com. Uh, we had ninety one percent of mobile game revenue is spent on in app purchases. Smurf berries. Smurf berries and donuts <coughs> yeah. is what's going on there. Yep. Yeah. Um, Smurf berries. So, I mean, so so is this uh, pretty much changed the game there? I mean, I, is anybody else doing in-app purchases? Like, I, are you are you guys, I know most of you guys have iPhones and stuff. Are, are you, uh, are you? I, I, I bought some uh, brushes for paper or whatever. That yeah, is. I bought everything for paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what i did like i used the app for like two minutes and i was like oh i'm, I'm going full bore on this one and i went kinda, down the list and it, bought everything you can buy for the app it feels kind of shareware doesn't it like like oh here's this free thing <laughs> if you like it buy it and you're like yes i want to support you this is awesome give me everything well what it does i mean it opens up a fantastic opportunity for developers because We've already created this really strange atmosphere where people are used to paying 99 cents for something that, all things considered, 
is typically worth a lot more money than that. I mean, like the other day I went to, I went to use the app store on OS X, which I've done all of five times in my life. And it, it bothered me that the thing that I wanted to buy was $5. And then I remembered that every other app that I buy is like between 20 bucks and $5,000 a package. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, right. It's not like the mobile app store. It's like a real app store. <clears throat> so like where we have developed this thing, people are now going to the app store looking for handouts. And you also end up with a situation where you're like, well, I really want this $10 app. And it's $10, so it can subsidize the creation of the app for the developer. But I want to try it before I spend that 10 bucks. Well, how about I let you use the app? But if you want to use all the features of the app, you give me more money. Makes sense. Makes Works. sense. Everybody wins. And, and then there's all those games, too, where, um, you know, the Smurfberry issues, like we talked about before, where the kids are doing it. And wait, what, why are what? Oh, oh, we're getting a, we're getting a number report. I see. Um, I, I couldn't register all that, Josh. That's fine. I'll um, tell you later. But um, but well, it, you know, and, and I've seen it happen here too. Uh, Missy has been uh, into uh, the the Simpsons tapped out game, of course. How many donuts has she bought? I had to go and check out an account problem because somebody uh, somehow uh, iTunes was charging to my PayPal account, which I had to fix was it missy it, no that that actually had nothing to do with anything i think that was oh, a scam okay. uh so, so i i ended up in her account and found out about 12 dollars in donuts were purchased <laughs> <laughs> then i had no, an intervention Rob sent and, me a uh, DM. and we moved up we, we moved on from there so um but but you know this is happening you know I'm going to push this away from you. <laughs> She's moving away. No, Rob DM'd me, so I'm just pushing away the microphone because. All right. But, uh, and apparently it's 91%, according to this report, uh, on slide to play from uh, both Android and, and uh, iOS. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing started out of, like, what, Farmville? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and we're seeing it, and we're seeing it kind of come over onto the the Xbox now. How we talked before about how the shoot many robots will have like certain weapons that you have to purchase for a dollar, you know, versus uh, collecting the in-game things. Chachi spent ten dollars for like a buttload of nuts or the currency of the game, uh, so that he could buy everything right off the bat. You know, I mean, yeah. it got you. It was worth it. <laughs> I spent less on that game than I did. Going out and buying the packaging and CD of a brand new retail game. Exactly. It's not like the $60 we dropped on Modern Warfare 3. Exactly. And we probably spent as much time as in Modern Warfare 3 exactly. on that game. So, I mean, is... it's not like I'm not, I haven't gotten my money's worth. I'm ranked exactly. eighth in the world on a level. Exactly. I've gotten my money's worth. <laughs> awesome. Completely worth it. But, uh, but yeah. So, um, anything else on that? Nope, moving on. All right. What else we got here? Hold um on. this uh oh, let's stay in the video games for a moment here. Um this is kind of a couple weeks old, uh, but I thought it was interesting. Uh Nintendo is uh reportedly to sell uh 3DS and Wii U games digitally at launch. Apparently, uh and this is over at Peaky Geek. Um Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. The story well, presumes that they're actually gonna sell something. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Just to point okay, that out. they've had like record losses. There, there's yeah, there's two ways to look at this. A, they're they're looking at a, a way to uh, spend less money because they they posted a record loss last quarter, and they think that if people don't and B, if they think that if that people don't have to leave their houses to get games, they're going to actually profit. Mm-hmm. That that presumes that they've actually figured out things like online strategies and having a storage system and all that stuff they kind of neglected on the Wii. Because I, I, you know, I get an email every week for downloads from the WiiWare store and I don't know where I would put them on my half a gig of memory that you cannot expand in that thing. And I don't know what the situation is for like a 3DS or anything like that. Um, and I know they're already like the, the 3DS they're going to have to raise back up from the price they slashed it to because they've been putting it out there at a loss. Okay, stop. This story hurts me. All Why? Right? Let's just stop talking about this. Why? <laughs> because it's, not, it's Nintendo. It's not worth my aggre- aggregation, right? Aggregation. Yeah, they had a profile of um, of the of the guy who created. And you guys would know these game designers' names better than I do. Um, who, who created Donkey Kong? Uh, oh, I want to butcher his name. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I, so and that's Nintendo, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um. 
but what's interesting is that their culture <coughs> and Nintendo Miyamoto, is very top Miyamoto, down. Like right. that guy, like creates his games and nobody collaborates on those storied ideas or anything with them. Mm-hmm. It's a really different way of thinking. And I, and I think maybe the, their inability to see this big train of, of social interaction and social gaming and things um, is part of that culture. They just, they're not able to accept new ideas because they've always done things one way. I've always, you know, kind of been good at what they're doing. So it's kind of like, you know, with the car companies, you know, they're like the, the, um, whichever car company it is that they're like, <laughs> the ones sure. that died. <laughs> so. They're, they're just not able to adapt. So this is maybe, you know, like they're scrambling, they're hoping they can get something out of this, but if systemically they still can't figure out how to innovate and how to, like, track these trends, it's not going to save them anyway. Well, actually, uh, I, I'm not saying that I disagree with you because you're, you're completely right when it comes to that. Um, however, uh, Miyamoto isn't actually part of that backwards thinking process okay. that, that we're putting on Nintendo. Um, because recently in interviews, uh, Miyamoto stated that he was going to step down from actually creating games. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he's not just, he's not responsible for just Donkey Kong, but he's also responsible for Legend of Zelda. No, I realize he's a, he's a, I mean, he's really kind of a god of gaming. I wasn't trying to say he wasn't. Oh, no, no. I'm just, uh, (laughs) using that as an example because that's what he said. Uh, he said that he's kind of passing the torch onto the newer generation of creators, and he's not going to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he, at least him at Nintendo recognizes that it's time to go somewhere else for ideas because this way is failing. Yeah, and it's they they've had problems with uh, they've always wanted to support themselves and never really had the third party support. Like, they did get a great deal with, like, Capcom that threw, like, all the Resident Evil games on the GameCube for a while or something like that. Uh, which is so weird to me, considering these are the guys that revolutionized the third-party system that kind of, you know, is the reason we have stuff like Sony, you know, that, that blew up over all the third parties making games for it. You know, like EA and all them. And, they, and they, it's like they haven't been able to get on the ball since after the Super Nintendo. And it's time for them to pass the torch to somebody else. It's, maybe it's time for them to pull a Sega yeah, in the long run. Or not be as bullish with their properties uh, as, as they have been. Like, you know, there was a good article that was passed around uh, this past week about Nintendo, it's time for you to put your games on the iPhone. Because let's be, I mean, I'm looking at my iPhone, I'm playing Doom, I'm playing Sonic the Hedgehog, I'm playing Street Fighter on it. You know, it's the perfect place for those old school games to, you know, bring along with you. But I don't have my Mario games. I mean, you you maybe have it on the Android because you can find emulators for it. And a lot of people do. But Nintendo's not making money off of that. No. And they would make a killing off of something like Let that. Let me just state for the record that I, I would, would never, that. never download emulators and ROMs. That's immoral. <coughs> Thanks, Josh. Thanks. And we here at Awesome Cast do not support such practices. I'm just saying it's a thing. I know. I'm not going any further from <laughs> No, what Nintendo needs to do... You. you know what Nintendo needs to do? What's that? They have this great new system, the Nintendo 3DS, okay? Yeah, where they make... A- it's, it's a great technology. And you know what you can get on there? A 3D Classics Kid Icarus. Yeah. You know what they need to do? <laughs> what's, that, what's that? Stop refeeding me crap I've already played. Yeah. yeah. I don't need a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. Nope. You want to know why? Because you played it 10 years ago. Yeah. And maybe play it again on the GameCube. Exactly. Yeah. I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need... Uh, what are some other Bomberman 3D? I don't need that. Mm-hmm. Okay? I want something new. Give me a new game I'm kinda interested on your in new Icarus. system. There's a Kid Icarus game, which you haven't had one of those in a while. It's a brand new game. They're going to put out a new, new Super Mario Brothers game, which it's more Mario. That's great, you know? Uh, but yeah, I'm with you. You know, the rehashing. It's one thing re-releasing all those retro games, but... Is, you know, like on the download side. You know, you know like what Nintendo? Up, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean Five. Mm. 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 Well, sequels is one thing. I think they're you know, actually uh, doing six of those. I think you know, Nintendo good. should actually do. What's that? They should realize that they no longer own any of the intellectual property it's going to take to compete <laughs> in the hardware market, and just make games for Android and iOS. There you go, like Sega. Yep. That's what Sega does. Yeah, because they, they really like they're just 
they're the boat's already full of water. Like the only thing that's left is like the little brim of the rowboat that once was Nintendo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I really don't see something like this Wii U uh, oh. catching fire like the first Wii does. Exactly. I mean, and there's a there's like a huge cruise ship just like rolling past this little rowboat and yeah, a little yeah. rope just like draping in the water. <laughs> it, All you got to do is grab a hold. It's so that's sad. It. It's so sad, really. It is sad. I mean, because we want it. We want our Mario games. We want our Smash Brothers. But we want you to also do something interesting. You know who will give them a lot of money to for those rights to release those games? Hmm. Microsoft or Sony? Oh, yeah. Sony needs it pretty bad. <laughs> Sony does need it pretty bad. And it, it, luckily for them, the rest of the company has enough capital to fund the PlayStation market for years. What if Apple buys Nintendo? You know, I was thinking, like, while I was hypothesizing about this horrible boat string <laughs> I don't... metaphor, um, the aesthetic that has followed Nintendo games throughout most of uh, its existence is not too far off from the way that Apple carries itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it's never, like, as you stay away from the, like, the more EA approach of, like, in-depth graphics, people beating the crap out of each other, like blood and gore, like Nintendo has always had. Like when the Wii first came out and people were upset because there wasn't going to be any violent games on the Wii because they were used to all these 3D consoles having these violent games. And Nintendo said, no, 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 no. We like cartoons. We like, you know, things that come out of Pixar. We're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> we're going to take your blood out of, uh, out of Mortal Kombat because, you know, that's not the reason you bought that game. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That that's what happens is Apple doesn't buy Nintendo, Pixar buys Nintendo and starts making video games. What? Instead of licensing. So, so, so them, they Disney make them. buys so Disney Nintendo. Buy. What's that? So Disney, Disney buys Nintendo more or less. Which is yeah, practically Pixar runs the show over there, to be honest. Right. At this point. There you go. I You're could, welcome, Nintendo. Wow. I could see that. <laughs> you can see that? It, well, alright, let let's Let's line up and list forward-thinking, able-bodied companies that could buy Nintendo. Okay. What are they buying when they buy Nintendo? Everything. IP. Uh, yeah, it's IP. Yeah. At this point, it's all, it's all IP. I mean, there. I, I feel like games. Nintendo's game developers are not worth a whole lot at the moment. No, not the developers themselves, but Mario is worth so much yeah. still, despite what they've done with the systems uh you know how many well, like, I mean, john's only- in the chat room saying that he 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 will get you know he gets the new new zelda games he will buy every nintendo yes there are us fanboys where i'll buy whatever's hot playstation or xbox but i'm also probably going to have a nintendo because i want me some zelda it's gonna happen and but the unfortunate part is we're getting far and few between we bought the gamecube we got a bunch of grandmas to buy the wii alongside us now, now what? Right. You know how many Zelda games they released for the Wii? What's that? I said, you know how many Zelda games they released for the Wii? At least <laughs> two. Yeah. Yeah. How long has that been out? A uh, long time. Right. Because really, I, I, other than that Zelda game that came out last year, I can't think of anything new that's come out in the Wii the last three years that I've had an inkling of interest in. Exactly. And they just like they it's get time to sell. They push it strong and then they start fizzling because they can't keep up their own games. They don't have third parties bringing in games. It just it just drops off. And all Nintendo fans are just looking around like, where? What? I guess I'll play Smash Bros. again. So no, you don't want to. I do though. I do. It's going for Smash Bros. Yeah. Listen. Sell the IP. Mm-hmm. Microsoft will buy it in a heartbeat. Okay. Because you know what would make the Xbox market better? Hmm. Nintendo games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. PlayStation will buy it in a heartbeat. You want to know what will help the PlayStation market a whole lot better? Nintendo games. There's a good article, and just look at the mismanagement there. Uh, so we finally had our chance for Mario and Sonic to be together in a video game. Yes. What did we get? Olympics. Olympics. How great was that game at Chachi Plays? Terrible. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Horrible. One of the worst things I've ever experienced in my entire life. A lot well, of no. flailing. A lot of flailing. Yeah, it, you know? that's what it was. It was a, a horrible, horrible experience. It wasn't fun. The gameplay was ridiculous. The story was dumb. It, it was a. It was bad. I don't want to play that game ever again. And I spent 
20 minutes of the hour setting it up. Exactly. So well, we, we yeah we had to move a couch and everything. All right, let's go to another one here. Um, screw that. This was one from this. This is kind of more uh, rumor mill, but it's kind of created a lot of buzz over the last uh, uh, week. Uh, according to New York Times last week, uh, according to The Verge, uh, Hulu to block cable cutters require paid TV su subscriptions to stream. I thought this was no longer a rumor. Is it no longer? Did it get, it's no longer a rumor. It it's back? an actual thing. I don't thing. think it's a rumor. I think oh, it is an actual thing. thing. No. Okay. Wait, wait so, so what's the story? That, what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, no, no, cable no, no. subscription it, is going to be required to use Hulu. So say goodbye to Hulu. In general? Like I'm paying for it. Well, I still have to because they're they're already <coughs> doing this uh, for I think Fox programming. They were talking about, or they were going to. I don't know if it's all Fox or just what Fox's properties that are paid properties. Because I mean, the, the, they were talking about this before, where if you had the free Hulu, you would have to prove that you had a cable subscription to watch Family Guy the next day <laughs> and not wait eight thirty days, whatever it is. Um. And the problem is these. I don't know if these these stories are saying that it's going to be like HBO Go. That yes, you'll have to pay for it and also have a, a subscription to a cable provider. Okay, so <coughs> wow, <coughs> there's my voice. There it is. Found it. Got it. Um, Talk fast before you clog up again. <laughs> uh, so here is an inside source thing says even though an authentication requirement is likely to happen right away. Uh, our source noted that what could happen relatively soon is that the content providers could require longer delays before their shows become available on the service for non-subscribers. Cable subscribers under this model would get access to a show on Hulu the next day, while non-subscribers would have to wait at least 30 days. This model would also likely apply to Hulu Plus subscribers. So basically what they're doing <coughs> is uh, the, uh, the publishers, so like... Um, I guess not HBO because they do their own thing, but like Fox and, and CBS or whoever else wants to put out shows, um, they are using Hulu as a delivery system instead of rolling their own delivery system. Okay, okay. Right, so you they still get their money as the publisher preventing you from getting content at a reasonable price. Um, they still get their money and uh, because you still subscribe to the thing. And then you still have a reason to give them money as somebody who is someone who has quote unquote cut the cord. That makes sense. So, so really, my eight dollars is the alternative to what is going to be a, a blockade. Right. So, I mean, this isn't like it's. I, I see it as like an interesting play, and this is something that they've been sort of talking about uh, since two thousand nine. Apparently, um, we've argued plenty of times on here that what, what actually needs to happen is that the publishers need to get there their stuff together and figure out that the best way to deliver content is to not put up paywalls um, and that they need to not try and rebuild the metaphor of television on top of the internet. They need to treat the internet as a new way to do things and come up with a new way to do this thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel that what we're seeing is the metaphor of the, well, I'm going to call it Comcast and I want cable. Oh, well, do you want the sports package? Do you want the entertainment package? Do you want all this stuff? The same thing's going to happen through Hulu, where you're like, well, you know, I'm going to be paying for Showtime on my Hulu account. Like, how well, does that And sense? then to a certain point, I, I, I feel like I'm already doing that because I'm getting I'm paying for my Netflix. That's getting this batch of content. I'm paying for my Hulu. That's this batch of content. I have my YouTube that has this batch over here. Uh, you know, something like an HBO Go. Yes, I've seen that picture. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's was it it's it's all the guys from the Avengers uh, in street clothes with a, with a pointing and yeah. said uh, two hundred point three million. Your turn. Your move, Batman. Your move, Your Batman. Move, Batman. Yep. So, um, but but yeah, you like I feel like I am kind of piecemealing, rolling my own cable subscriptions by picking at all these services already. Yeah, I mean it's the whole the cycle is starting all over again. Yeah. Plus, like it used to be. You know, you got bunny ears on your TV and you got television. Everybody got television. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? You plug in the internet, get the internet. Oh, but wait, but wait, let's put tears on it. And then I feel like, and I feel like where I feel burned by this is, is well, when, which, you know, you've kind of settled my fears. Is it going to be a problem when I don't have my cord? I'm already paying for something. Is, are they going to pull the plug on me? Did they just lose me as a subscriber? Did they just shoo me away for giving them money? 
which it would be ridiculous, and it'd be a, it'd be a you know a nail in the coffin for a Hulu Plus, I think. At that point, I think point. what's going to happen before any of this that is, um, you know, just in the same way that Comcast has this has their I don't know what it is their um, Xfinity. Yes, thank you very much. Which ha- Other people has providers are going to be able to do that too, and they're all looking for ways to deliver things on their own and have their own sort of portal that goes, you know, that people can see their cable content through. So Hulu is basically going to be cut out of, will no longer be the middleman for, for any of these things if the cable companies move fast. But if the cable companies don't move fast, Hulu is placing itself as that portal. One way or another, though, what's happening is that the bundling that we have all hated forever, like you have to, you know, you have to buy the, I don't know what, the sports package, you have to buy this other package. That bundling has been the thing that people have always not wanted to have. Um, and the cable um, cable companies don't care whether you do that or not. In fact, it's not good for them because they have to justify and pay for all these subscribers who aren't watching the content. They've never wanted it. And Hulu doesn't want it, I'm sure. Um, the people who want it are the content creators, you know, the publishers, um, like Rob was saying, because they can bundle together all their different things and sell people big menus. So, but one way or another, what's going to happen is either Hulu moves fast and becomes the portal that everybody watches television through, or the cable companies themselves move their services faster. I have a bet that the cable cable companies will do it faster because they're incentivized in some ways, because um, they're going to lose because everyone is going to cut the cord, and then they're going to be kind of screwed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, in a kind of a related story uh, I found last week, uh, there was a story about how the TV industry is actually nervous about the impact of apps on cable subscriptions as well. Uh, I guess they're more talking about apps like on your TV, on Roku's, uh, you know, that you're seeing like kind of higher end ones, you know, how you're getting your Hulu, Netflix, MLB through there now. Um... So they one quote here from uh, News Corp. I just moved the thing. Uh, News Corp's digital officer, John Miller, uh, is, uh, you know, the question hasn't been answered as to whether television viewing will consist of a single app that mimics ta- TV bundles or a series of different apps that ca- 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 together form the content experience. More like kind of what I'm kind of doing, uh, where it's a little bit of this. Netflix is my showtime. Hulu's my, you know... Can't think of no HBO, I, you know, or Stars or whatever, kind of in comparison. So, um, where are we at? What I like is that the, the Comcast guy in that article says you download all these apps and you get app fatigue. That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. We don't mind <laughs> what is that? From app to app. App it is not a problem. <laughs> I mean, would like not... to think that people want a single service, but he is wrong. I, I, who's, who's, who's downloading a bunch of apps on their on their TV like this? Are we uh, or? What what are they talking about? Apple TV. Hey, you know players? that you know that um that giant monitor I put on my desk. Yeah. The the fifty five inch Samsung. So it has it has apps, right? Okay. And Which, it has a QWERTY keyboard on the back of the remote, right? Yeah. So you open up the YouTube app, and then you realize that you can't use the QWERTY keyboard to type into the search field on the YouTube application for the Samsung television. Oh, uh, it's not running like a Google TV or something in there, is it? This is why nobody is ever going to do this crap. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody can get, get their head on straight for it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and even like I, I, the one guy I know has one of those TVs with Hulu Plus and everything on it, and they, he says it's slow in comparison. You know, yeah, I mean, like the tech. The thing is that the tech is absolutely there. You look at the the latest Roku that comes on the thumb drive thing or whatever, um, and the new HDMI spec that allows for you to like plug something into just your HDMI port and then everything works and it provides power and all this other good stuff. So all the tech is there. The problem is that nobody's putting their money in it. They're letting everybody else flounder and figure it out before they stick it inside their devices, which is why nobody is putting Google TV inside of their hardware. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and even, you know, as much as uh, Google TV has been railed against, I mean, they're still doing a better job than those, those guys. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely not the best, but then we're comparing to something like Apple, you know, but... I mean, even the Apple TV is so handicapped. Yeah. Like, really, who's winning here is Roku. Exactly, exactly. Because they give you a little bit of everything, whereas in the, the Apple TV, you're locked down to a handful of things that they want you to have, which is just the way it works. Uh, can I throw a story that's not in the run out, rundown no. at you? That no. no, you're fired. No. Revision 3 gets bought by Discovery. Oh, yeah, that was a thing. How about that? 
Uh, Revision 3, uh, I've been watching them probably since the beginning. Techzilla, uh, Scamp School, Film Right, I love. Um, Dignation was the first big thing I think it was on there. Well, congratulations, you did something right. What? (laughs) (laughs) Congratulations, Kevin. Yeah, there you go. So here's the circle of life, right? So uh, Tech tech TV, screensavers, they all leave, right? Like ninety percent of them end up on um, Twit Twit or, dot TV. Twit or Revision Three, basically. Or Revision Three. A lot of them are on both. Right. Really, a lot of them are on both. Patrick. So Gordon, Revision Gordon. Three gets bought by the Discovery Channel, and here we are back on broadcast television. <laughs> <laughs> a big thing was like uh, what Jim Lauderbeck, who's uh, one of the bigwigs over there, uh, was saying about how cable TV was dead just a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, this this basic TV. Like, I think it's a good move for cable TV. Yeah. Like all this right. discussion about cable no TV problem. is is so funny because like we talk about cable TV, like they're hard up for cash. When the the thing is, they're not at all. And if they make smart acquisition moves, they can drag this thing out and it's for not a lot even, longer it's, than we'd like them to. And the networks are a lot of these guys are progressive. Like uh, Discovery already owns how stuff works. They bought that a few years ago, uh, mm-hmm. and they've been integrating that. And that I don't think they do much with that on their network. Like that's just their online component for what they do. Mm-hmm. Wait, um, what? What? How stuff works? How stuff works? The, There's the, a TV show. Is it a TV yeah. show too now? Yeah. Okay. It's been a TV is show it, for a is long it, time. Is it based on like that whole crew that does the podcast? I only know them as, as the podcast. Are you going to make me use Wikipedia, Michael? Oh uh, man. Uh, well, anyways, but so they have the <laughs> side. All right. Here's how I. It, it, but but a lot of these guys are freaking out. Something like TBS has their app, and we're you know have the kind of registry thing, like we were talking about a little bit before. HBO has a has a great app, you know, for their for their Go program. Um, it's the guys like the Comcast and the Time Warners that have to make sure their money's coming in and playing nice with everybody that are having the problems this, and, and getting this other stuff going. This whole, well, this, they're also tied into contracts. So they're, in some ways, they contractually are limited. Yeah, it's not just yeah. they aren't smart enough. Yeah. This whole uh, Discovery Revision 3 thing mm-hmm. is just the, the Discovery Company being intelligent. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. No, it, they're paying attention to what people are watching or interacting with online. Well, it's so it's it's not it's not overall like intelligent. It's business wise intelligent, but overall, like so, if you pay attention to Discovery's programming, do you remember the good old days when you could watch the Discovery Channel and actually learn something? <laughs> now, do, do you remember that? That's yeah. all You're really reaching back there. Yeah, wasn't wasn't that a good old time? And now the Discovery Channel, like I used to be. Like, the Discovery Channel used to be such a keystone in how how you would talk to people about things. Be like, it's it was so often to talk to them. Be like, oh, you know, I was pretty much raised by the Discovery Channel, <laughs> and that immediately you knew exactly what was going on in that person's head. You knew that they were like a thinker and a self motivator and a I don't an, think an didactic individual. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that they've been practically raised by the Discovery Channel. And we haven't talked enough, Chachi. <laughs> but like now, I the Discovery Channel that I grew up with, I would be so happy to like show to kids. I remember coming home from school and being so excited to watch um, uh, How It's Made. I've seen like every episode of How It's Made, and now it's just like reality show, reality show, reality and show. And now they bought a company whose uh, top headline on their on their uh, page is. Ryan's top 100 F yeah must see films. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so they're expanding, mm-hmm. which means they're making more money in theory, which means they're building a bigger portfolio, which is cool. And, but at and, the same time, they're not the Discovery Channel we used to know. And, and Discovery owns several channels that aren't all entirely. Yeah, they're just they're Discovery just building on thing. top of that empire. I mean, what we got pulling up real quick TLC, which I, I understand they they dropped the learning channel from their name because they have so much reality stuff on there. Oh yeah. It's uh, all reality. Learning, like, well, you learn how to be on a reality show. Exactly. Yeah, obviously you've got uh, exactly. TLC animal planet, the Oprah Winfrey network. Oh, there uh-huh. you go. Uh, planet green investigation, <laughs> discovery, Let's see how many <laughs> uh, discovery, fit and health, military channel, science and velocity. Let's see. I watch, uh, the animal planet. Wait, bring it back up. I was looking oh, at, okay. Uh, let's see. Animal planet. 
Wow, I didn't even know Tree Hugger was a thing, dude. I ha- it was on at uh, <laughs> at that uh, that burger place that LB likes in Market Square, and you know who was on it? Uh, yeah. Friend of Wrestling Mayhem Show Butterbean. He has a, <laughs> he has a uh, cop show on there apparently. Jesus. Go figure. I- <sighs> Go I'm trying it. to wrap my head upon everything you just said, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the boxer, you know, brawl for all, you know. You know I know what you're talking on, about. That, that we talk I understand to, every word that just came out of your mouth. It's a processing thing. Yeah, my okay. mind just cannot process I that as a real thing. To string them together in that particular Exactly. Order. My mind cannot process that as a legitimate thought. And, uh, and this is all commercials where they're throwing, I don't know, the audio wasn't on, but it was all like 3D mock ups of like, it seems like self sustainable islands in like the ocean or something like that like these on the tree hugger ideas. channel on the tree hugger channel that seems I, it quite seems, believable it seems, it seems about right you know yeah. and i'm like well this is really interesting i don't know what this is so i'm gonna i'm gonna blow your mind here in front of me i have a list of 45 series that are available on the discovery channel i'm now going to name the ones that are actually educational okay <laughs> Uh, hang on, it's going to take a minute. Uh, <laughs> cash like, Cab technically <laughs> is you can technically learn something from Cash There's knowledge on there. Uh, construction Intervention uh, is a reality show, but you could technically learn things, so that's good. Right. Skip, 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 skip. Um, dual Survival, yeah, sure. Uh, factory Made, legitimately educational. Mm-hmm. How It's Made, yes. Uh, life, uh, sure. Into the Universe with Stephen Hawking. There you Undoubtedly go. Undoubtedly yeah. the well, most I, educational I really, thing left. Either way, I really hope that unboxing porn sticks around on Revision 3 through this merch. Uh, Planet Earth, yeah. Planet Earth was a big thing. Everything else, I said there's 45 on the list. Everything else is a reality TV <laughs> and show. And I've watched four of the things that you've exactly. named <laughs> that are educational. Yeah. Or questionable. And, and, and actually, and, and, and all due respect, Revision 3 has very educational stuff. Techzilla is basically screensavers like back in the day. Yeah, it um, really is. I mean, uh, Film film Riot, I watch a lot for video, learning how to do video and grill a video and stuff like that. Um, and, and then, the, so the other question on top of this is, because they're not, they're, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense for them to try and roll Revision 3 programming onto their currently owned broadcast network. So, does Revision 3 become a new broadcast network for Ooh, broadcast television? Kind of like a current TV thing? Right. Or okay. does Revision 3 stay as the current Revision 3 but is now a Discovery property and Discovery uses it as its way to weasel onto the internet and provide more <laughs> streaming content? Because yeah, I, yeah. the people who currently system. watch Revision 3 are not going to watch it on broadcast television. No, exactly, exactly. Can I, can I say this, though? Um, so... If we move away from the gaming stuff for a second and look at the food stuff, because I watch Cooking Channel. I'm sorry that I'm not watching Discovery. I do learn things on the Cooking Channel. Mm-hmm. Um, they have on those channels um, um, Bitch and Kitchen, which I understand started as a web show as well. And they've managed to find a way to expand that concept to a half-hour show that's fairly entertaining and includes a little bit of recipe stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what they're doing there is not trying to move the people um, from watching it on the web to watching it on television, they're trying to reach out to the people that watch things on television and say, hey, there's good shit over here on the internet. Hey, and they also have stuff like Epic Mealtime, so they're, they're, they're going down that, that side, too. Oh, is Epic Mealtime on TV, too? Oh, uh, oh no, on Revision 3. Yeah, on oh, Revision so, 3. Uh, so I think it's the content there, but it, and it, it looks like they are, are, they are retaining most of the staff, so it is like a talent thing. So, and Revision 3, I remember like a couple years ago, they had to lay off half of their staff. Oh, yeah. So I mean, they well, pivoted, they became more, they've been kind of more described as a uh, broker. I look like, forward to being able to flip on a TV and seeing Cute Win Fail. What? <laughs> There's a show on Revision 3 called Cute Win Fail. Also, wow. Delicious Steak. I would just like to. Uh, it's, it's mostly it's mostly like they've taken YouTube stars that have already established themselves on their own and kind of started brokering deals along with them well, to do advertising. The, the, annoying uh, orange, yeah, annoying or- orange go. is getting uh, its own cartoon on Cartoon Network. As your cute win fail, but um, it, it, to agree with Cindy, uh, I watch Food Network religiously. <laughs> Like oh, yeah. all the freaking time. It, we it have might... this in common. I never knew it, Chachi. What's that? We have this in common. I never knew your passion oh, for food. Oh man! I if I'm not watching the news in the morning when I wake up, or uh, Monday Night Raw, chances are the TV is on Food Network, and I can 
I can validate that uh, that channel is educational because watching Chopped alone, I learned of things I didn't even know exist. Here's your here, here's your cute win fail. I no one cares about this anymore. We've moved on. It's got a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the puppy's gone, so now we don't care about it. All right. <laughs> I was curious. I'm like, what is cute win fail? It's cute when uh, I don't know the rating thing. But yeah, yeah the, is it like hot or not for cute? There you go. There you go. Expand the concept. The, uh, the, well, it's the, the Tosh.0 of the Rev Revision 3 network is what it is. The cooking network, though, is where... Uh, <laughs> Back to cooking. Uh, the Good Eats show moved to. Tell me more about yeah. cooking. Will you shows, shut though? up! Network is what Food Network used to be. Yeah. And Good Eats, if you had to name a educational food show... Oh, yeah. Good, Good Eats. Good Eats is at the peak. You know he's not like actually a, like a chef or culinary anything? I did not know that. He's an actor. Oh. Well, no, that's not true. Well, he's a uh, he's a he Christian something like and a, video a professional, trained. and then he went to cooking school because he wanted to learn how to cook. Did he go to cooking school? Oh, yes, sir. Like, that's <laughs> We're I, off the rails. Again, we may have to we may have to consult Wikipedia. <laughs> we are consulting Wikipedia. Hold on. Yeah. But I do know this that there was a kerfuffle. I think it was last year, last week. That Walt Moss, no, not Walt Moss, but, but the, um, shoot, I'm flicking on his name too, the, the New York Times cooking guy that uh, is all about sort of the minimalist stuff. He said no one has ever learned cooking from a cooking television show, which what? is kind of ironic because he himself does cooking videos on the New York Times. So we're just um, doing this for the hell of it? You were right, honestly, by the way. He I went to from, uh, the you know, New Julia England Child Culinary and I mean, how do you? I know how to chop onions because I watch those guys. Yeah. It's just a completely odd thing to have said, you know? Listen. Anyway, but Alton Brown flipped on Twitter and um, lambasted him for a good hour. I learned how not only what a reduction was, but how to make a reduction because of Food Network. So, that guy's already wrong. There you go. That's why right. how-to videos are like the hottest thing on YouTube, right? right. So there you go. Um, Have we lost every all the audience? I yeah, think, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the hope so. The ones that don't watch Food Network are gone. Um, <laughs> oh, so I never said. So this is one I was excited about, and it was the last one. And we'll no roll one cares. out of here. Are you, are you are you there, crappy? We're thinking about yeah. food. Okay, I just want. I, I didn't know if I muted you by accident or anything here. So you have any thoughts on the revision three there? I. <sighs> I, I rem- I'm like Rob. I remember what uh, Discovery Channel used to be, um, <laughs> and, and I know we try to go through the stuff now, and, and uh, especially the stuff that Mrs. Crappy likes watching, and it's just brutal. It's brutal. Uh, I've learned how to catch crab because the deadliest catch. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where are you going to catch crab? Where you're not a hundred miles from a crab in the in the wild. It's so? Not an edible crab, but other crab. Right. Oh, but yeah. yeah. Th- there's that. So. Uh, last thing, this is one I'm excited about, and oddly, with the picture goes right with what we were talking about. Google is a roll out there. Actually, I guess they already have uh, their Hangouts on air live streaming for all Google Plus members. Yeah, Yay. say goodbye, so to Justin. Dot TV. Then, right? Well, we, we could replace. Well, wait, well, it can't entirely replace Justin TV because we can only get about nine people on at a time. Um, oh no! Yeah, there's that. But I mean, but it's pretty Wee. cool. You get you do your you do your uh, your hangouts, and once you're done with it, it automatically uploads to YouTube. Yay! I don't know. It, it might be. I, I've heard about some of these having like a live stream, uh, like a public live stream. Like I know there's one that, that's happening tonight at ten thirty with Conan O'Brien. So I'm actually we should probably drop in and see see how that works out. You know, uh, on, on our end. But but yeah, it, this is this could replace all of this. For yeah. But that that's actually what it says it's going to do, that you can have a certain number of people actually participating in the Hangout and the rest of the people just watching it live, which yep. is why I'm saying I think it is perfect for this kind of a, you know, this, Google has seen the future. This is the what if kind of scenario that, that, that was proposed that I, I or somebody else proposed like when this first we first saw Hangouts was what if you get to a point where you have your participants, you can broadcast it. I mean, my God! You, if if you figure out a system to monetizing it to okay, you paid for the seven like online seminar and you're let into the paid circle. You know, what I mean, it, it, this this kind of opens a lot of doors uh, for a lot of different concepts. If so. they could have a little queue so that people there's like a waiting list and you could let people in one at a time, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of it'd be like you know car talk or something where they've got the people lined up ready <laughs> to be interviewed but they're not participating. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. And I've been wondering about things like how to manage like this hangout in here, which everybody's gone. I know Frank had problems with uh, his phone, and I think the other kid has passed his bedtime. Um, but um, you know, but, but you know, how do we manage live people jumping in in the middle of a show like this? You know, maybe I maybe I, I can get rid of all this stuff and just have one giant hangout behind you know television monitor behind me. You know, because the rest of us will all be watching the hangout too. You don't we, don't, we yeah. can just look at you without having to see people monitors looking over your shoulder. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that they'd be just be down here. You know, um, it, it, this is very exciting, and, and I I, I want to start playing with it. I would love to develop a concept around this just to see how it works out. You know, and uh, and and this makes it easier for people to do this. You know. What have I been doing the last six years <laughs> building this? When it's like now, now Google does it with a button. So, but also you're probably gonna get a lot more crap too. But um, I don't know. What do you think about that, Rob? Um, I don't know. I hope they don't fudge it like everything else they've built. <laughs> the good. With Hangouts, have you, have you played much with Hangouts? I don't think we've done much. No, I haven't played with Hangouts very much. I mean, they're neat. Mm-hmm. It's still not like a pleasant experience, and the whole <clears throat> the whole video chat thing is still something that is uh, uh, it's got a novelty to it, mm-hmm. really. Sort of like how um, like on TV you'll see a lot more like and we were talking about the hologram thing. Like it makes a lot more sense for you. So you saw the Avengers, you know, the council meets and there's uh, an ominous video feed from all of the council members that does nothing for you than hog bang. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate again here. So now my my company has gone virtual. Um, I don't we don't have a central office anymore. Uh, everyone works from home or from whichever home they're in. If you're in the if you're me, so it is really useful in the morning to see people face to face. It just kind of gives a sense of connection that just voice doesn't do, you know. And and I think there is a real value to seeing someone's face, seeing their facial expression, and just having that moment. Even though the rest of the day you might be using, you know chat and tweeting and whatnot we use a blog to kind of keep each other an internal blog to keep each other informed but but having someone's face and someone's voice all connected there it's it feels i really like the days when we have video much better than the days when someone's video is not working we're just stuck with audio Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i I know you know for us it's it's been really fun doing the monday night things uh you know and and, uh yeah i know rob you've been in on the on the podcast meetings we've been doing um, and maybe I just hate looking at other people. Maybe that's what it is. Well, you can just <laughs> cover the screen. And it's just like it's just like anything else, right? Well, I mean, yeah, like like FaceTime. I've, I've never it. used FaceTime. I tested it once on the show, actually. Yeah, yeah. But FaceTime is something that like it's so incredibly inconvenient for me that I don't do it. Mm. You're just like your brain is too big to be encompassed in this whole thing, <laughs> right? You just need to be a virtual thing in the cloud. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like, uh, I feel like this whole attachment to the physical embodiment of people or representation thereof, uh, is something that is a tie over from days when the internet wasn't really around and wasn't that popular. So the question is, will this stuff, will all the video stuff hang around to the point that the kids that are growing up today still get those warm fuzzies that you get from video conferencing somebody? Not that I'm saying we're all going to end up in, in like tubes one day, like in the Matrix. We never actually see each other. But wow! I'm curious like, where like, like from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where everyone's like a you know just a manifestation of each other, or, or a, a species evolved that's just what is it? Some special shade of blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm curious if that if that warm fuzzy sentimentality is going to be as strong as it is for our generation for generations to come. Good question. Okay. Wow. <laughs> On that note, uh, <laughs> it's time to wrap up. <laughs> uh, Cindy, you're at bigbigdesign.com mm-hmm. for your business needs, and your blog is at mybrilliantmistakes.com. Mm-hmm. All right. Check in there anytime you need to see a picture of a cat running in a panic from um, someone knocking on the door. <laughs> what? Where is that at? Oh, I'll, I'll put one up later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> UncleCrappy.com, Mike Pound. Congratulations on 100 show, guys. That's Thanks, man. Hey, Thanks. I'm sorry. I, apparently, we've been having some connection troubles with you tonight. I don't know if it's the computer or, or somewhere in the tubes. Your face. Yeah, we're good. We'll get it figured out. Okay. Uh, but go check him out, UncleCrappy.com, uh, where he's apparently talking about horses right now. 
I picked I picked the horse correctly, by the way. Nice. Did you bet on him? Uh, well, no. This is the first year I, I've had absolutely no gambling opportunities for me in in probably five years. So, oh wow, excellent. And Rob is at robjdlc.com. dot Where he yes. does things. What's that? I don't know. You do things over there, right? Yeah, I do do. Th- I don't really do much at robjdlc.com. I post on my Tumblr regularly. It's a, it's a gateway to your world. Yeah, and on the Twitters, I do the Twitters, which is a lot of Instagramming. You can follow me on Instagram too. Same name. There you go. There you go. Join the party. Do you have this? I have a lot of people liking my pictures that I don't remember ever following. Um, is this is this Android's fault? That oh, would boy. be Android's fault. Is it okay? Is yeah, it, go ahead and blame us. Most of the people that like, <laughs> I, I have no idea who I am. You are. I, I don't. I don't I just, have that problem. No. No. I mean, are they following you? Or I presume. I guess. Uh, just maybe not, your really great photos are getting forwarded around. Of my retweeted? face and my dog, I yeah. guess. Your um, dog is cute. It is, it is a pretty cute dog. It is kind of weird to watch the if you pay attention to the popular page on Instagram. Because mm-hmm. a friend of mine, actually, who, I mean, I'll admit, she's really cute. And she has several puppies that makes all of these things better. The first picture, um, first picture I see on popular, by the way, right now is, 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 is a puppy. So. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it takes. But so she got one picture that was on on the popular page, mm-hmm. and now every picture that she posts gets like five hundred likes. <laughs> yeah. I think we have discovered uh, the secret to um, Jenna Marbles' success. Oh, absolutely! Puppies, uh, yes. puppies and a cute girl with push-up. That is not a secret. I, I don't know. Who, <laughs> I do not know who that is. Mike, I, I, I'm she's sorry. the most popular female on YouTube. You are so bad at the internet, it's not Mike. That. I, apparently, I am. I, I I leave for a week, and I don't know these things. Um, there wasn't much internet up there. Well, there is dogs, and there you go. Um, Chachi, you got insert coin to begin dot com. Yep. Uh, yes. 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 Three point three part interview series with Mark Mears, who is a huge nerd. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Um, in the interview, he talks about uh, creating. Or customizing action figures and creating costumes. Hmm. So he doesn't just play a nerd. He is a nerd. And I understand he likes to play with himself in the video game. He does. Yeah. He uh, loves to play with it play as himself in the video game. <laughs> so wow. yeah, um, you can go over to insertcointobegin.com dot mm-hmm. com and check out what he has to say. Excellent, excellent. Um, and I am at Sorgatron.com is my bloggy blog. You are not. There's a bunch of other stuff over at SorgatronMedia.com, including this week's episode of Unsung with Chachi. That was weird. That was weird, filming yeah. it without me. I got to uh, direct remotely via Skype. <laughs> yeah, via Skype. As, as you guys uh, attempted to film here in the studio. <laughs> yeah. That was that was really interesting. Let's not do that again. But now, but now we know we can do no, that. No, let's not do that again. But we, we can do it. If no. Something, something no, else we cannot. If something horrible happens, which is the I am only telling reason you, that would happen. I am telling you right now, we cannot do that ever. <laughs> that is not an option. No. No, that, no. Bad. You have to have your brain preserved, Mike, somewhere. We're, we're so not that doing that. Always be available. I always have to be available for charge. Yes, yeah. how it is. We're not doing that. Sorry, but guys. We're at awesomecast.com. Contact at awesomecast.com. Twitter at awesomecast. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Google Plus. Uh, again, we're here live every Tuesday. Live at uh, Seven p.m. Eastern. Uh, join us in the Google Hangout. And maybe we'll stick around to the end of the show next time. Um, and uh, yeah, and we always re- we talk about wrestling after this. So if you're in the tech into wrestling, uh, spend your Tuesdays with us here. So uh, this is Sorg uh, for everybody else. This is the hundredth show. Woo! Yeah! Touchdown! You were here in person. Randy. There's Zambelli fireworks everywhere. There, you, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, yeah, hundred episodes in nearly two years here, uh, and we're still going. Mm. We're not going anywhere. No. Nobody told us to leave yet. Not yet. Wait, Not yet. No. If, Not yet. If there's been a hundred episodes in nearly two years, yeah, that means we've taken off a month. <laughs> well, yeah, probably well, we'll like take four off, shows. Like two yeah. weeks at, at, at Christmas. So yes, you're right. So you're plus right. last week, so. we are slackers. Wait, yeah, wait, wait to wait to point that out, Josh. You know, oh, you um, guys are fired. We're so inconsistent. I'm hiring a new crew. There you go. Um, Episode one hundred and one. New crew. <laughs> 
<laughs> so for the uh, awesome chat room, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. We're